Hi everybody, thank you so much for watching our first YouTube video. Well, together, we've both done work before this. We are Great and Big's Beautiful Tomorrow, or I am Francis, and this is William. Hello. I think we have some questions to answer, like, why are we asking you to watch this? Um, why is my room so yellow? Um, why did you just watch us in miniature in a carousel of progress maquette? Um, we're going to jump into a few of those answers very quickly before we get to some actual Disney content. It's true. Uh, Francis and I knew each other for about seven years. We've known each other for about seven years, but we didn't actually become friends until we realized our love for Disney parks. Sure, in the past, we nodded at each other politely mm -hmm. and we worked together in two separate workplaces mm -hmm. working. Um, but it wasn't until we started talking about the mouse that we realized oh, we're going to become friends. And you know how hard it is to become friends with someone else who's a Disney fan? Because it always becomes a game of one-upmanship. Yeah. But eventually we realize we clicked. Yeah. Um, my love and history for all things Disney parks comes from nostalgia. My mom worked for Disney in the late 80s and early 90s during the perfect sweet spot for when my brother and I were growing up. In the Renaissance. In the Renaissance period. So we grew up with Little Mermaid and all the classics and Beauty and the Beast and Aladdin and everything. So she had the inside scoop for when it came to sing-along song videos, clamshell releases, and trivia. She loved sharing trivia with us. And I am more of a recent uh, Disney file, but there is no zealot like a convert. <laughs> I Don't get me wrong, I, I loved all the movies as a kid. I quoted Ariel all the time. Um, I went to the parks a, a lot, actually. Like when I was three, five, seven, and 11. It was a pattern. You're very uh, odd. I am very odd. Very odd. Super odd. Um, but it, I didn't truly fall in love with it. I'd kind of forgotten it, grown up, lost the magic, um, but discovered it again when I took my son for his first trip back in 2016, um, back when he was still young enough to not have, need a ticket. To, and to not ride rides. Oh, those are the days. <laughs> oh, um, uh, but it was perfect. Like, the, it was everything... I forgot or it had changed or it was just, I didn't, I was too young to appreciate it the last time I went. Um, but it was perfect. And, um, ever since then, it's been my goal to plan as many vacations as our schedules and budgets will allow. And when we can't make it down to Orlando to fill our lives with, uh, Disney, uh, whether that be through pin trading or theming the heck out of birthday parties and baking <laughs> projects. Um, oh, and uh, making cardboard versions of the Carousel of Progress. I guess that counts too. Oh, totally. Francis and I are both avid Disney YouTube watchers. Um, we have our favorites. We always watch and then catch up together. Like there are soap operas or something. And we know there's so much great content out there from people in California, close to California, or in and around Orlando who are cast members, annual pass holders, or just visitors who go all the time who are close to the parks. And us stuck here in Chicago, Illinois, in the middle of the country, furthest away from those two parks. Minnesota. True. We're slightly to the we're, right of center. We're <laughs> closer than Minnesota. <laughs> Thank goodness. So we make t-shirts. <laughs> uh, so we want to provide our own point of view when it comes to our love for Disney parks when uh, we can only get there when we can. We, that's right. We have a lot uh, of ideas in store for this channel, so we hope that you'll continue to watch from uh, William's collection of memorabilia from his storied past of <laughs> with the mouse um, to like ways to um, bring Disney into your life through crafting and baking, um, as well as a healthy chunk of in-park content. Um, too, because we do have a few trips planned. So in the hopes that you will get to know us better, we're going to kick things off with a countdown of our perfect day at Disney in a segment we're calling Expedition Everlist. Now this isn't going to be a list of attractions that you have to ride or shows you have to see or food that you have to eat, even though we will mention food later. But this is more of those special little moments that make a perfect Disney day between us. So unless you're too excited to sleep, like I normally am before a trip, uh, let's get things rolling with... Number 10, experiencing a park's rope drop. 
there's something so exciting and a little bit off about waking up super early on your vacation uh, while you're in the parks to either hop on the monorail, hop on a bus, or hop on a boat mm. to get to one of the parks super early for the rope drop, which is the opening moments where you show up right when the park is supposed to open. And if you're lucky at certain parks, you get like a little show. You'll either get the Fab Five doing a little song and dance at a welcome ceremony, or the Streetmosphere singers will pop out a piano and just start singing a song for you. And if you're really lucky, you'll get the ever decadent daytime fireworks explosion, which for a moment, can I just say, there is nothing more extravagant than daytime fireworks that the money you put into having fireworks during the daytime, it makes no sense. <laughs> It makes no sense, but I love that moment. I am not a morning person at all, um, unless I'm at the Disney parks, in which case I miraculously am able to survive on two hours of sleep a night. But I can't, for the life of me, convince anyone that I travel with, which is usually my son or um, my uh, mother, um, to to join me uh, for a uh, rope drop at the parks. Um, you know, I say 7 a.m. and they go, mm, what are you, you Isn't this vacation? Right. And they're not wrong. Um, so I have actually, um, the closest I've gotten to seeing a, uh, rope drop ceremony is just the daytime, the daytime firework. Like <laughs> I, getting in, hearing Mickey's voice and, you know, seeing that little, you know, tail of smoke in the air. But from the monorail. From, you know, um, getting from, there. <laughs> from like, like the little, like pressing through. Like the little, like, well, like the vomitorium of, of town square. So uh, one day, it's my goal. I think, I think I'm going to do it on yeah. my next trip, for sure. I'm such a newbie. You're so new. Number nine, rushing, dashing, or strolling to your number one first thing to do in the morning. So I've been very lucky to have visited the parks for many years since I was young. And this tradition that we started our very first time was strolling down Main Street, taking a left at the hub and heading into Adventureland. Because a lot of people will turn right, so mom said we should turn left. And then we go into Adventureland. And we hit up the Dole Whip stand there in Adventureland. It's the very first thing we've done every time we've gone together, even if we don't go separately, we still hit up the Dole Whip stand. And at 8 a.m. in the Orlando sun, you have to inhale that sweet treat or else it will drip and become a sticky mess all over your hands. But it's a tradition. I know and I know. And I know. Get off my back about it. Oh Dole whips are basic. Dole whips are super basic. No, they're not. Because they're so delicious. I would give my, I mean, you know, like it's it's a perfect thing. Like it's the perfect like treat. If I could have one right now in chili on this chili Chicago morning, I'd still eat it because it'd be cold and it would be not melt. <laughs> I need to find a not attraction based tradition because, yeah. um, you know, Denny and I have been now to the park six times and he's only six years old, so that's pretty good. <laughs> Track record. Um, track record's pretty good. Um, but our tradition the first three times was riding the Walt Disney World Railroad Yay. first thing in the morning to get to our Dumbo Fast Pass in the back of the park. You gonna do that next week? I don't think I will. Oh. Because it's been closed and will be closed for another, <laughs> I don't know, 30 years. Um, <laughs> and the other one was uh, riding Tomorrowland Speedway. Yay. And that was also closed on our last trip. So, well, that Are one you will ever be gonna ride Tron? Yeah, we're going to make Tron. I feel like Tron is causing a lot of trouble for you right now. Well, I mean, <laughs> I feel like we should get a Fast Pass for free to ride Tron. For your My turmoil. My should be like, um, you have ruined <laughs> several of our vacations. No. Um, traditions. You've broken our well, traditions. Well, they have you've shortened. Ruined my vacation. It did shorten the track. So, yeah. yeah, I think actually we do need some restitution <laughs> from Tron. I uh, know Denny's very excited about that. But the one tradition that is impervious to... Uh, attraction closures or scheduled closures or unexpected closures is popcorn. That is without a doubt my son's favorite treat. Um, and starting when he was two years old, he would ask for pie corn at the park. So um, we collect a bunch of souvenir buckets now and we go, that's one of our souvenirs. Number eight, experiencing that shared I get it now moment. 
understanding why mom loves that uh, one attraction song or why Jenny thinks that that one cast member's costume is super cute or understanding why Anne Hilda absolutely has to go to Tusker House every time she visits the parks understanding why recommendations were made um, understanding why it's someone else's tradition uh, so my favorite and probably most recent experience with that is the bookcases at Jungle Navigation Company Limited Skipper Canteen. Love that name. Yeah, it rolls off the tongue. It rolls off the tongue. <laughs> it's, also, it's my favorite restaurant though, guys. I'm not, it's it's true. It's actually my favorite name. I love that they have Co and Limited in it. It's the cutest thing. It's so greedy. Um, but it's the, uh, the bookcases at uh, that restaurant. Um, <laughs> Set place. <laughs> I, see on the bottom of the screen. I'm gonna write it down there. Um, but it'll just look like super casual evangelistic. It will, yeah. Really mm -hmm. long. <laughs> so uh, my friend uh, told me to make sure to go to the bathroom while I went to that restaurant. Didn't really say anything else. <laughs> like, and you're like, I'm a grown woman. Okay, I'm usually the one telling other people to go to the bathroom. It's mother. He did say there's a bookshelf. Um, and then I spent. A good, like, you know, five to seven minutes with my concerned son being like, are we going to leave? <laughs> I'm just looking at all of the books and book titles. Um, it was, it's great. And it's just those uh, Disney details. And I was like, oh my gosh, now I know why people will just stand here in the way, in everybody's way. Your next list is a list of uh, washroom foyers around the park. Well, my next list is uh, top 10 uh, book titles. <laughs> In said wall. In said wall. Awesome. And then restroom foyers. Yes. Can you not spoil this for everyone? Okay. Twas the summer of 2016. So not that long ago. My, my brother was turned uh, 30 that summer. And his buddies took him on a trip down there. And I ended up surprising them and meeting up with them there. Only one of them knew. And I surprised them along Main Street. And it was super magical. Super exciting. There was about a group of 16 of us there. My parents included. So... We broke tradition that trip. You just said. Literally a big fat liar. Just said we always turn left and go towards Adventureland. We had some people in the group that made us turn right and we went into Tomorrowland. It was a whole rigmarole. It was a whole thing. Um, but after getting into uh, Buzz Lightyear Space Ranger that Spin, we did that. We, again. We're no gr judgment. We're no gr judgment. No, no, no. But we went there first. After we got out of there, after the long line, it was about noontime. So the Festival of Fantasy show was happening in front of Cinderella Castle around the noon hour. Uh, height of the heat, height of the uh, smells, and height of the sweat in there in the hub. And this show was happening. And as we're walking through, speeding through to get to Adventureland to get some sort of uh, shade over us, I stop for a moment and I'm watching this show. And the princesses are dancing with Mickey Mouse. And I'm looking at people around Denny's age. People, small humans, children. Some call them children. Some people do. Um, sitting on top of their parents or guardians or loved ones' shoulders watching the show. Kids are dancing around. And out loud, I said, oh, I love this right now. And I said it to no one. No one was really... My buddy next to me was like, what? And I was like, oh, nothing. Um... And I was either crying or sweating profusely. I'm not sure. Pretty sure I was crying. <laughs> but it dawned on me at that moment. I mean, it was only a couple of years ago. And of course, the I get it moments had happened over the years. But as an adult human now, without kids of my own currently, I saw this moment. I'm like, oh, I get this joy. I get this happiness. And it was a really special moment to be there with um, people overhearing me talk to myself. Yeah. You put mine to shame. Oh. Mine's bookcase. Oof. Number seven, watching someone else have that magical Disney moment. So I'm going to try and recover uh, from what the beautiful thing you just said. <laughs> um, I love uh, watching my son interact with uh, the characters. I know that's totally, you know, commonplace thing happens all the time, You, whatever. His face, the first time that he met Daisy Duck at Tusker House uh, character breakfast, 
it was like the biggest smile I'd ever seen. And you better believe that I click on all of the viral videos of kids having magical moments with like Snow White and, oh. you know. Um, but uh, the one that sticks out most, I think, in my memory is uh, that we had the opportunity to take our picture with one of the country bears, who's Ernest. I'm not gonna pretend like I don't know exactly who it was. Oh it was yeah, whatever. Like, oh, oh, it was some it was bear. The, it, was, it was some bear. I don't know. Was just, uh, I think he was there with his family or something. I don't know. We were, you know, all posing for it, and Denny runs out of the picture right at the last minute, and I was like, "Oh, Dennis, come back, come back!" Um, you know, trying to rein everything in, trying to rein the vacation, and I think uh, Ernest could tell um, we're on a first name basis. Um, <laughs> Ernest could tell uh, that I was. Um, feeling a little stressed or just, you know, um, that I was trying to control something that was out of my control. Um, and I'm sure that the cast members see that all the time, um, oh, yeah. you know, of like, I'm going to make this vacation perfect. And, you know, um, so Ernest, like now that it was just the two of us in the picture, Ernest kind of rubs my back a little bit and, you know, like consolingly, like you just let it go. Oh. And okay. Now that I'm, when I'm saying it out loud to another human being, Yes, that sounds really weird um, that a um, artist <laughs> from my back, but it was just this really, it was like a truly comforting moment. Um, like it was just what I needed right at that minute to like bring me back to like, yeah, I'm here to have fun. I don't need, like my, if my son doesn't want to be in this picture, he doesn't want to be in this picture and that's totally fine. Um, and like ever since then, I've tried to be a lot uh, more chill about everything. So thank you, Ernest. I'm sure I've been the source of of other people watching me, uh, and it was their Disney moment because um, I've grown up in the fine arts field. I have uh, I have grown up acting, just like little stuff, nothing important at all, little things. Grew up acting. Were you in Law and Order? Dun dun. <laughs> Are you Daniel Craig? Were you that dead body that one time? <laughs> so I grew up uh, amongst and amidst the fine arts. I grew up acting. I grew up. I, I work with actors currently uh, when I get a chance to, but I'm a terrible improviser and I can't interact very well with face characters in the parks. I get really uh, stiff and stone-like and strange when these poor cast members um, and friends and characters are trying to interact with me. When, I, when I'm the one choosing to meet them, mm -hmm. we just can't have a regular moment. Quick sidebar though, it is a little weird watching them pivot. Like when you ask them a question and then they have like, you know, you could see that they're, you know, falling back on their training uh -huh. and they pivot it back to like the, their world. Related. And it's like, oh, okay, yep. I asked right. what your favorite Dole Whip flavor was. And you started talking about how Eugene <laughs> and I was gonna Pascal. say something about Pascal. <laughs> So I, I want you to see what it looks like. Uh, Francis, can you help me here? Sure. Sorry. Um, I need you to role play with me. Um, okay. Uh, be Snow White for me. Okay. So I walk up and I'm like, uh, hey, Snow White, how are you? Oh, hello. Can I? Stop. See, I walk up to her and I hear that, especially the Snow White. I'm wishing. That type of voice. And I don't know what to say to those people, those poor cast members. So I just run away. So it's something I need to work on personally. And I hope that my strange moments have made other people's Disney moments while they've been in the park. Feel better about themselves. It's a schadenfreude type situation. Number six, a midday table service lunch break to find your second wind. I love a good meal. And living in Chicago, I have my pick of any kind of cuisine, any variety, um, any time of the day or night delivered to my door. I passed a breakfast taco place on the way here. Yeah. And it took everything for me not to stop. Well, I'm glad you... Why didn't you bring me a... Okay, no. we're going to discuss that later. A lot of my cousins and other Disney fans, pointing at you, William, uh, will uh, often ask me, why would you waste your time in Disney World on... <laughs> <laughs> on um, sitting down like for an hour and a half uh, to eat a meal. Um, and my answer to that is it's the one of the only chances that I get, I, ignoring my earlier um, earnest country bear story of chilling out, I still haven't really chilled out all the way. <laughs> and I try and cram a lot of stuff into um, a single day at Disney. And so um, 
going to a table service restaurant is one of the only chances that I give myself and my family to really just sit back and relax and take things in. Um, and there's so much to take in at table service restaurants um, and kind of the unexpected um, Disney difference moments like um, a waiter at 50s Prime Time Cafe singing the Keep Your Eye on the Egg song um, for my son because he's uh, the cast members heard it about a thousand times uh, working there. It's one of the videos that's on repeat. Yeah, I know it very well. Or um, my son at um, Beer Garten in the Germany Pavilion, uh, when the show starts going up to another little girl at our table and asking her if she wants to dance with him, oh. which was like, oh! <laughs> <laughs> so it's those, it's those moments that you kind of, you know, you're rushing too much everywhere else in the parks to really appreciate. Um, and so that's why I do it. I love that. You know mm -hmm. what else I love doing? Yeah. Negating this number. Because my perfect Disney day does not include a sit-down table service lunch. Yeah. <laughs> I've caused her to go annoyed. So, here's the thing. Growing up, going to the parks, my family was always go, go, go. There's no time to do anything else that isn't necessary. So, we never sat down for lunches. We never stopped midday, got out of the sun, <laughs> unfortunately and took that time to relax or experience those special little moments. Yes, my parents did feed us. We were well-fed children. Just as you were walking. Don't worry, but we would eat. Putting chicken nuggets in your mouth as you were proceeding forward. They're the easiest things to pop in your mouth while you're walking. It's an easy, easy thing to do. So yes, and we, and we do have special memories. The four of us, we have this great picture that's still in my basement right now of the four of us in the sci-fi drive-in diner in the two and two cars, enjoying that atmosphere there. It's so magical. But when it comes to currently even going and sitting in a restaurant and breaking up my day, when I'm not hopping, I don't hop around as much as other people do to different parks as well. So when I'm in the park, I'm a pass on midday lunches. Sorry. I'm sorry that we're, we already have two of them scheduled for I'm, our trip together. <laughs> do we? Cancel. <laughs> Number five, watching the park transition from day to night. Tomorrowland, Toy Story Land, Pandora, Adventureland, everywhere is completely different at night and gorgeous and magical. Go! Imagineers know where it's at. They know how to light the parks a certain way. You know, it's been said that Walt's favorite time of day at Disneyland was watching, it was dusk, watching the Main Street USA, transitioning from the bustling city during the daytime from the slow, glowing, evening, strolling place at night. And it's really like getting two parks, no matter what park you're in, two parks for the price of one because they look so different. Which is good because they're quite expensive. You're really getting your money's worth. Yeah. Number four, waiting in short lines during the night's first fireworks show. Again, full disclosure from me, I am a to, um, you're going to be like, why are you doing a YouTube channel about Disney um, when you clearly don't have any Disney spirit? Well, first of all, you're wrong. <laughs> Second of all, um, I, just, I, I just don't, I don't like waiting in lines. I feel like you're spending way too much money um, to be in a park to spend, even if the queues are really long and interesting and, and fun and mm -hmm. have a lot of stuff to do in them, it's still like, I'm not going to spend two hours of my time doing that. So um, getting the, the chance to wait in next to, you know, close to a walk-on line during uh while everybody else is off watching the fireworks sign me up i will i will pay extra money uh to get into the parks um for like the special ticketed events and i will be happy to miss a fireworks show in order to you know ride haunted mansion about four or five times yeah uh here's the thing it was writing this list that i realized why we didn't do things at table service restaurants we went during a time without fast passes mm -hmm. so we were uh i've been programmed to wait in lines and not really uh, worry about it because uh, A, that was one of the best memories with my parents, like howling with the wolf in, in front of Haunted Mansion, but also just it's what you did. It's, uh, it killed the time. There weren't that many attractions back then. It was before this big boom that um, Eisner and Wells and, and future CEOs um, and uh, caused at the parks. 
so we were just used to it. Uh, that being said, yeah, it is a great time to sneak around, get on your favorite attractions when those fireworks are going off. Especially, uh, you see the park in a different way. Speaking of lighting from the previous moment, they bring the lights down all over the park. So you really can watch the fireworks from anywhere in these parks and walking around to rush safely because you can't run in the parks mm -hmm. uh, to your favorite attraction while everybody else's eyes are, are skyward. It's a perfect, perfect little you can moment. You steal everybody's wallets. <laughs> I was, don't say okay, popcorn. Just, but, oh, yeah. Yeah. I keep my popcorn in my wallet. <laughs> You'll never steal. You can steal my wallet probably faster than you can just steal my popcorn. That's true. That's true. That's a fact. <laughs> Number three, experience the night's second fireworks offering. Ignoring everything I just said a moment ago, you should see the second fireworks show of the night and skip all the attractions during that one because the parks are emptier. And if you're like me, where you're a opening to close kind of a, a park goer. Um, you're going to be there until the end anyway. And when you see that second fireworks show and the park is closing moments afterwards, it's a great moment while those cast members are shooing you out of the park to go down Main Street or the boulevards that lead out or anywhere else around the parks. You get to walk through those gift shops and exit right away. And it's a perfect cap for the evening is seeing those fireworks at the end. <laughs> My son is still um, pretty young. Uh... He, he's a he's a big boy, but he's still pretty young, and he still technically has a bedtime. Um, so we haven't yet, um, you know, we we don't tend to watch the second um, fireworks show, um, but it's a tradition that I'm looking forward to starting because that's you know that's kind of Disney 101 is is you know the second fireworks show is less crowded because all the little kids have to go home. It's a grand finale. It's the grand, grand fiesta tour. Grand finale. Grand finale. Grand finale. Number two, the kiss goodnight. So this is another thing that since I have a young, young child, I still haven't seen. I haven't seen it. Um, but I, I recognize that it's truly important and that it needs to be done. Here's the thing about the kiss goodnight. It's number two of our Dis perfect Disney day because it's perfect. I don't want to talk that much about it. If you know what it is, you know what it is. If you don't, I know what it is. I just haven't yeah, seen it. Yeah, it, you just gotta, you gotta do it. It's, it's a perfect. I okay. I said fireworks is a perfect cap. Um, the kiss good night. Oh, That's a perfect cap. What perfect That's a finale? Cap. You put one cap and then the other cap. Many hat. You wear many hats. Mm -hmm. Number one, falling asleep on a loved one's shoulder on the way back to your resort. Some of my most vivid memories from the parks with my family, whether they be extended or my immediate family, have been the moments where we've been in the park for 12, 13 hours, and you jump, you finally, because we stay at the discount hotels, walk all the way to the end of the bus terminals, get on the bus, and it is almost completely dark, besides for the spinning Tinkerbell souvenirs or flashing Mickey Mouse balloons. And it is almost dark. It is quiet. For the first time in 13 hours, there's near silence. And the air conditioning is blowing on you. And you just get to sit there and fall asleep for about the 20 minutes it takes to get to back to your resort. And it is a magical moment. If not a quiet, peaceful moment, that has proved that you did something right for those um, 13 hours with your family and friends. If anyone is still watching this video, bless you. Thank you. Um, but uh, prepare for, I guess, a little bit too much information. I, just a deep dive into my psyche. Real quick one. Um, so my son was born around six years ago. Um, and on that day, um, I didn't necessarily feel like a mother right away on the day that he was born. I know I'm not the only woman who feels that way. Like you're, you're really super comfortable with the, with the pregnancy part and then you give birth and then, oh my gosh, your heart is now living outside your body. <laughs> and, but you like, it's still like just this weird, like, I'm not a mom yet. I don't have the right haircut for that. Like, I don't, you know, like the, it's, it's, it's a learning curve. Um, but I will say that on our first trip to Disney world, when he was two years old, I had, you know, achieved a lot of milestones before then, but, um, having him fall asleep on my lap, just, you know, like 
tuckered out <laughs> from the parks, like on that bus, like holding him on my lap and then carrying him from the um, bus back to our room at the resort. That was, you know, I, like I feel like I earned my motherhood card that day or got at least got another punch on the motherhood card. I love and how, that idea. <laughs> um, and how something so heartfelt and so um earnest and so magical and deeply personal can happen in such a commonplace setting as a bus is you know something that only disney can provide yeah so there you have it that's our perfect disney day did we list any that you include in your perfect disney days or were there any that we egregiously omitted and you're like what are you doing include them yeah uh, let us know mm -hmm. we love we're excited to be joining this a big, uh, beautiful community of Disney fans and fanatics. Uh, so we want to hear from you. That'd be great. Yeah, and we have, as mentioned previously, a lot in store. Uh, so we hope that you will um, stick around and watch some of our other videos. Yeah. Until then, anyone, anyone for, for pizza? pizza?